With Jamasize, it is now possible to monitor a nearby seismic station without needing an instrument in the classroom, no matter where you are in the world. Once the software is installed, there are just a few steps to load a station. There are different types of stations that you can select. The first, under Remote, lists all of our educational stations. If you scroll down the list of available streams, you will see their names and locations. If I select one, the station information is shown below. For example, selecting MTOR shows that this is a middle school in Portland, Oregon, running an AS1 educational seismometer. Clicking OK selects it and adds it to our source manager. JAMA size can display up to three stations at a time. Another type of station you can select is a research seismometer, any station whose data is stored in the IRIS Data Management Center. There are a couple of different ways to set, select a station from the DMC. The first is a map view. A map will load with 20 random stations. You can shuffle the, sta the sources to identify 20 different stations. The idea is that this will help you find a station close to you. If you zoom in, the map will maintain 20 stations in your view. If you click on a station, the station information is displayed on the right. For example, this is a Strickhuizen in Nevada. You'll see the status shows as online. Sometimes the station will be offline for one reason or another. If you select them and add them to your source manager, you will not see data until they come back online. Another way to select a station, if you happen to know the details of the station you're interested in, you can enter it directly. Either fill in the form, however, sometimes the fields are a little bit obscure. You can also select the fields from a full station list. For example, if you wanted to select a station from the Earthscope Transportable Array, the network code is TA. Each station in the transportable array has a station code. The location code is the least obvious. In this case, we want to select the dashes. I know that's the proper choice because I'm looking for the BHZ channel. That is the channel that records up and down motion of the ground. If you don't see BHZ on the channel list, try the other location codes. Once you've made your selection, you will see the status of the station. If it's online, click OK to add it to your source manager. Once your stations are selected in your source manager, clicking OK loads them onto your helicorder screen. The network status is shown, whether the station is connected or if it's requesting data to backfill. The helicorder screen is designed to mimic an old helicorder drum where each line represents an hour and the current recording is on the sec second to last line. Both the date and times are shown in UTC. What we're seeing on the screen, if we look at the first example, Mount Tabor in Portland, Oregon, we're seeing a, a recent earthquake that's happened in the 1700 hour line. And the lines above, we're just seeing the general background noise of the station. We're actually seeing the earthquake recorded at all three stations that we've chosen today. If you notice on the second station, however, we're not seeing their background noise as well as we were for the first. You can adjust that magnification. If I select scale data, I adjust that amplitude magnification. And you'll see both the noise and now it'll properly scale that earthquake. You can make this adjustment for the, first, the third station as well. If you decide to drop that station, you can go back into File, Manage Sources, and you can remove it. We can take a look at just the two stations. The last adjustment that I wanted to review is how much data shows up on the screen. Looking at these two stations, you'll notice there's eight hours of data for each station. If you're using this in a classroom, you might want to come in in the morning and see what happened overnight. If you select settings, all the controls are sorted by tabs. I wanted to highlight the number of helicorder lines. Currently it's set to eight, representing eight hours of data, which I can change to 12. 
This shows 12 hours of recording for each station. If you are running just one station, you might want to increase this setting to 24 hours. So as we leave this running, we are still recording this earthquake. The recording will come in for a little bit, a little bit longer on both of these stations.